Okay, um, first of all, just a warning. When I showed Dada my notes, he said, Mama, before our people settle down, your message will be over. So, please settle down. <laughs> Young people, there is no time to zone in and zone out. Okay, just zone in and stay there till my message is over. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask, I've asked uh, Carol, the longest part of my message is the Bible reading. Carol is going to just read the Christmas story to you. It's all familiar. So just close your eyes, do whatever helps you to just listen to something familiar, fresh. Don't fall asleep, just listen. So this is the birth of Jesus foretold, Luke 1, 28 to 38. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be barren, is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. And the rest, okay. Um, Luke 2, 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Okay, so uh, that's a fair bit of the familiar Christmas story. And out of what we've read, we're just going to look at one verse, which is right at the end. But Mary treasured up all these things and ponder them in our heart. I don't know if anybody remembers or keeps record, but I think a few years ago, when I had to share the Christmas message, this is the verse that I spoke from. But 
uh, this time it came to mind for other reasons. So we see this whole uh, very dramatic set of events. You have this young girl who has an angelic visitation and she must have been pretty freaked out not just to have an angel come and talk to her but tell her that she's going to have a child before she's married and that child is going to be born miraculously and then you have Joseph who's a decent guy who wants to divorce her again having a dream and then having a change of heart and deciding to support her you have the heavenly hosts, a whole lot of angels appearing to these poor shepherds out in the field, giving them a very clear message and uh, them rushing off and finding that things are exactly as they were told. So everything about this story is like pretty uh, amazing, mind-blowing, miraculous, spectacular. Yeah, And we are looking at uh, Mary's response to all of this Okay, in contrast to others. And why I say in contrast is, if you look at the verse 19, it says, but Mary. Okay, but Mary did this. As opposed to others, this is what Mary did. Something that Mary did is being contrasted and highlighted as being different from the reaction, responses, behavior, actions of others. And this is not to say that the behavior of others was not good, was not to be done. Because if you remember, when we started this Christmas season at Shanti's place, it was with Anne's message about the shepherds, it was titled The Shepherd's Joy, talking about these shepherds who came and who saw the Savior, they were filled with joy, and joy they carried this message. And that set the tone for all of us for Christmas, that you know, to receive this message, to allow it to fill our hearts with joy and to go out with that joy and share it with others. So that's like uh, something that's worth emulating. So we're not saying that Mary did something as opposed to others who, who did something they shouldn't. But her behavior is being contrasted to that of the shepherds and others. So just to remind you, what did the shepherds do? They heard this amazing thing which they could have said oh this can never be and they could have continued life could have gone on as usual which I think is what a lot of us do with things that we read in God's word or which we hear like you know okay God is saying that but that's a bit much how can I change my life how can I do this how can I depend on on this word and take a decision but they didn't do that they heard the word and they immediately went and they found Jesus and they worshipped him and they were full of joy so that is such an awesome experience that they had but this is what the account says but Mary okay she did something different what did she do she treasured the things that happened and as is customary I looked up treasure I didn't have to look it up I asked Dada and he said treasure in this context means to hold dearly to hold close to you okay to cherish that's what Mary did Mary's response was to hold what she saw, what was happening around her, the revelation that she had, things that had been told now coming to pass. She held that so close to her. They were just not experiences that she enjoyed in the moment, celebrated, said, wow, she probably felt all of that. But she held that which was happening, that which was revealed, that which she experienced. She held it close to her heart. What did the others do? They too were amazed. They marveled. The Bible says they were amazed. They were mar they marveled. They rushed out. They shared with others. You know, and probably she too, as a young girl, would have felt all that and much more. What amazement! Okay, the savior of the world has been born, born to me. Okay, born miraculously. So she would have experienced all that wonder, amazement. But imagine this young girl choosing in the middle of all this to treasure, to hold something so close to her. Her response was to treasure and to ponder. Okay, to ponder is to, uh, to mull over something, to dwell on it. Okay. She was choosing to ponder over what she had witnessed. And as I thought of the word mull because of the season and all the mulled wine that has been 
talked about and which I also experimented with apple juice at Carol's birthday, um, not Carol's birthday, Carol's party, uh, where we had the wine or the mal wine, what is done is you allow this wine to be infused with the flavors, the, the taste of the uh, spices that are put into it. Yeah, and then you enjoy that wine. For people who do, they enjoy the wine with all that additional uh, flavor. And, and I thought, in a sense, uh, that may be what happened with Mary. She uh, literally allowed what was happening around her to infuse her heart, to infuse her mind, to infuse her spirit. It was not just something happening outside her, but she pulled it into her. It became part of her spirit, her, her thoughts, her meditation. You know, she was allowing it to um, just, uh, just like soak and become a part of her being. Bill Johnson um, talks about this verse and he says that God's word, his promises should possess us. They are to be such a part of our thought life, prayer life, our songs, our spontaneous times of singing to the Lord. He says, when I do that, then all through me is running the promises of God. I don't spout them off. I guard them in my heart. They, not, they don't just keep me sane, but they keep me connected to my future. You know, and if anyone is guilty of not doing that, it's me. You know, I can celebrate the things that God tells me. I'll read something and I'll feel excited and I'll tell people around me or I'll send a message. But to allow that word to sink in and to just be so much a part of my being and my prayers. And as I was thinking of this, you know, I, I uh, hear of people who grab a word from God and they will just pray it for years, for their kids, for their children. You know, I have told you the story of how when, when I was so small, I was just not even one year old, I saw a young man on a stage with a guitar and, uh, you know, uh, worshipping and leading people. I mean, I like to think it's not worshipping, performing, but whatever. He was in front of this crowd. And, you know, it was so uh, encouraging for me at that time because I was such a fearful mother and I was just like always worried something would happen to them. And I just took encouragement, okay, he's going to live and he's going to do all these things. I don't have to worry that he's going to die, you know. But I can't imagine if I had just let that word grip my heart and possess me, how it would have transformed my prayer life, my attitude to him, to his choices, to just about anything that God wanted to do. And that's what, you know, we can learn from Mary, that holding something so close to your heart, you know, letting it just... Uh, become a part of your life and as Bill Johnson says uh, letting it possess you so in that sense I just want to say that Ma the example that Mary said which is a verse that can just skim over so easily is so profound she held, everyone was looking at the same situation, everyone was celebrating happy, full of wonder, amazement but she did something different and that was she allowed what happened uh, she allowed, I mean, she let, She took it close and she held it dearly. And I'm guessing when we do that, it impacts our life from the inside out. Okay? There's a difference between knowing something and knowing something. You know, and that's what happens when we uh, treasure, ponder, you know, cherish something. It's just not just something that we know our God is like this, but we know in our hearts intimately and that affects our being and everything that we do. You know, Jesus uh, says in Matthew 12, 34, that the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, and in our journey as a fellowship, that's one of the things that you know, we've constantly tried to uh, live by, that we don't want our worship to be a performance. We don't want rehearsals at events. We want these songs to be part of our regular worship so that when we do anything anywhere, it comes from overflow. And I think that's the same spirit of this that we allow what God speaks to us, what he reveals to us, what he shows to us to be such a part of our being that everything that we do comes from overflow, not from like scratching and thinking, oh, what did God say five years ago? I better remember that. But, you know, we've, we've cherished it, treasured it, and that it overflows from us.
So as we uh, draw to a close of another Christmas season, another year, it may be uh, worthwhile for us to just reflect upon what God has done for us, something He has spoken to us, something He has revealed to us, something that we have witnessed, you know, and think back and say, you know, God did that and I didn't really allow that to just sink in, stay with me, change the way I look at life or people or situations. You know, just to uh, learn from Mary that we need to treasure, to hold close, literally to guard carefully what God is revealing or speaking to us so that we can, you know, let it shape our lives, our actions. And again, I want to use Bill Johnson's words to let it possess us. Yeah. So this is what we're going to do to close. Just everyone's going to stay where they are. And we're going to take five minutes of just silence, meditation, whatever you call it, and allow uh, the Holy Spirit to bring to mind something that may have happened in the past year. Maybe it's a word you've read in the Bible. Maybe it's a word that came to your mind. Maybe it's an incident that happened in your life, in your home. Just something God has done, spoken or revealed. We're going to choose to just dwell upon it, ponder over it, hold it close, treasure it. Because that was what God did for us. Yeah?